Hey, what's up guys? My name is Francesco Martinez Barali Forti, and I'm a producer and writer. I started out playing piano when I was a little kid, and the only way you could play with the cool kids in a rock band was playing synthesizer, playing progressive rock. That's the first way I got into synthesis and keyboards and programming. After that, there was kind of the boom of software synthesizers and plugins, and computers started getting fast enough where we could do everything in the box. So that's how I started getting into producing and writing in the box more than actually playing. I ended up going to Berklee College of Music where I studied electronic production and design. Straight out of college, I got hired by Rodney Jerkins to be a writer and producer, and now I'm part of his pop writing team. I'm a fan of people who write, don't necessarily know what they're doing, because I think it's like music technology becoming more democratic where it's now accessible to people who wouldn't have the money to purchase very expensive gear. I really enjoy that about working in the box. Any kid, 13 years old, in his house with a laptop can start making music, whereas before it was really limited to a small sector of people. And what that means is just we have more creativity, more new art, more crazy ideas flowing into the world. I think that being said, it's really valuable to have plugins like the ones Joey is building, where you can trust someone with good ears who knows what they're doing with a certain track record in the industry. And maybe you don't necessarily have the expertise to create that sound, but he does. So you can trust that when you open up one of his plugins, with very little effort, you're gonna find what you're looking for. My favorite JST plugin is Gain Reduction by far. I had recently really gotten into very aggressive multi and compressors, and I think it's very interesting, especially since I'm working with all these samples, I've been thinking about the micro of sound as opposed to the macro. Some tiny, insignificant sound, which would be nothing to our human ears when you've cranked it to a certain point to get all the minute details. Maybe you'll only take the high end of those details and use them in a new way. So it's really, for me, like having a microscope where you can look at just one specific little part of audio which in the big picture you would never have noticed was there, but it will bring it up so aggressively where you can just find all these very interesting sounds and textures. What I really like about JST plugins is they're really light on the CPU, and I like to use things in weird configurations that wouldn't necessarily be practical in a real studio environment in a physical world. So let's say stacking a bunch of plugins one after the other just to see what three times, five times, ten times that sound effect would do to some tiny minute sound. The fact that I'm able to do that with these plugins is amazing. So many of our favorite plugins are so intensive and so heavy that you can't really experiment with them as freely as you'd like to. I work out of Logic, so I really started using a lot of their built-in things because I was concerned about finding plugins that were CPU friendly. Again, keeping in the theme of when you're in a session with an artist on the creative side, you want everything to be as streamlined as possible, everything to go very smoothly. So I'm also concerned about plugins that won't be a burden on my system and will allow me to very quickly make interesting sounds. I get a big kick out of making sounds from weird sources. I'm a big fan of Diego Stoko, someone who went viral for making music from a bonsai tree or something like that. So I have a big library of crazy sounds, duck calls or stones falling through a metal trash can. And if you chop all these things up and you layer them with maybe some standard drum libraries that everyone is using, it will really give it that little bit of an original touch. And I think so many people in the industry are used to walking in and hearing the same sounds from the same synths and the same drum banks that they really appreciate when you tell them that the source is like a whale call or something crazy that you've integrated into the music. In my opinion, the key ingredient to great production is original sound. If you're using the same sounds, not only will they really quickly sound dated, you're not going to stand out from the rest of the crowd. Everyone has the same tools, everyone has the same synths, everyone has the same plugins. I think you have to find a way to use them creatively. A thing that I really love is, like I said, I grew up playing keys, I was never a guitarist, but I was really jealous of like really gritty tones and amps. And so something I love to do is use like a classic synth and run that through a guitar amp, totally destroy it. And that's not a sound that you hear very often, or at least it can always be fresh because synthesizer sounds are changing so often. But people don't think to use them as an instrument in the traditional sense. Everyone thinks they're this virtual thing disconnected from the world of hardware. But I love to feed it into a piece of hardware and see how it interacts that way. I think there's a lot of nostalgia right now for the sound of analog. 
I personally think there is a lot to be yet discovered in the sound of digital because of what digital inherently means. Technology is always advancing, chips our computers are based on, the way everything is rendered is just always advancing. What we think of as digital is not as set in stone as what analog is. Analog is a specific piece of gear that exists and is not changing. But the digital world and the way it processes is always changing. And new ways of processing sound, either spectrally, all these crazy new technologies which we could have never achieved before are every day becoming possible. What if you loaded up one of these plugins 50,000 times theoretically? What would that sound like? I think that is going to be what the future of digital is going to be sound-wise. JST has had a big impact on my creative process in terms of efficiency and speed. One of the things I'm most concerned about when I walk into the studio with an artist is not wasting their time. Because lots of people aren't as interested in the minutia of sound design in the same way a producer or an engineer. They just want to come in, make sure the track is rocking, getting the mood, and do their thing. So I think plugins that enable you to do that really quickly are amazing. I think a plugin that doesn't require hours of tweaking but will allow you to go as deep as you want is the best compromise and the best combination because you can very quickly achieve what you're looking for but it also is just a universe of experimentation. I think people should pay attention because there are plugins that have a huge creative appeal but are very solid and reliable on the technical side. You know that every single process going on behind the scenes has been carefully examined by someone who knows what they're doing and that gives you the freedom and the trust to go crazy, twist knobs, no you're not going to destroy anything, no you're not going to blow anyone's brains out. I think one of the things that makes you unique as a producer or engineer is having an original sound palette. And I think knowing that you have certain tools on which you can depend to enrich your palette is something that everyone should be concerned about and stay current with. I think these plugins are a great source to mix and match with some of your favorites, some classics, or some new experimental things, but they fit in very well with previous setups. They don't overshadow anything. They play well with your pre-existing sounds in a way which lots of plugins don't. But I work a lot with built-in plugins, and they tend to be simplistic, lots of times in a good way, but when it comes to bit crushers, none of them really give you the control to make your sounds unique. Lots of people People stay away from bit crushing the same way people would stay away from a vocoder or sounds which really easily become cheesy and predictable because they're static because you can't really tweak them or make them something new. I think Pixelator gives you more control than other plugins which do similar things usually would where you can really make it a unique sound and not just the same sound people have already heard a hundred times. That's cool about Pixelator.